In this episode, we're going to take a look at two upcoming gameplay expansions to Golem Overlord, Expeditions and Relic Radar. We're going to discuss what we know about these right now, how they're going to improve or add to the game, and possibly what we could do to get ready for these. If this sounds interesting to you, please stand by. Hey out there all you Golem answers, welcome back. Bronze Dragon here with some Golem Overlord coverage. It's been a little bit, uh, but uh, there's been a lot going on in the Hive ecosystem as far as games going on, so I wanted to catch up. There are two new features that kind of caught my eye, um, and you can tell Yixen has been working in game because sometimes the icons pop up, sometimes they don't. You can see when he's working on uh, adding stuff to the UI and such, uh, and it looks like he's pulled it back off at this point in time. But the two things I want to talk about in this episode are Relic Radar and Expeditions. Relic Radar is the next on his list. Uh, according to his news release in December, when he put out the new achievement system, he said that uh, Relic Radar was, uh, you know, he was working on that, and that was going to be his focus. Okay, so with that said, and we've heard it mentioned a few times, and you can see it in uh, mentioned in his different uh, articles on the game. However, we don't know a whole lot about it. So what I wanted to do was this kind of piqued my interest. So I went in and I was digging around to see see what I could find. Um, over the last few months, you can see that he's been adding various stats here and there um, that will apply to both Relic Radar and. Uh, expeditions and we'll take a look at those first but um, let's jump over and I found a reference article that he had put out a little while ago and just to get a definition because relic radar is first on the list expeditions is down the road and according to him it's a it's a much harder project but um, and both of these uh, may seem very similar to what we've experienced in other games um, how it actually works out and ha how he puts his spin on it we'll have to see but the definition of the Relic Radar is basically an hourly claim for an NFT potential. Okay, and we've had this, we've done this in various other games, but this is, this is his take on it. Okay, and this is how it functions. Every hour, this skill evaluates your chance to secure an NFT from a designated pool. Think of it as an hourly treasure hunt right within the game. That's your how hourly potential. Okay, skill and strength synergy. The proficiency of your relic radar combined with the overall might of your account not only increases the odds of discovering an NFT, but also also boosts the likelihood of uncovering higher rarity treasures. Okay, this all sounds great. Great, we can uh, have a, a random uh, roll of the RNG dice uh, uh, once per hour t to find NFTs. Great, but there's a kicker. Uh, as we know, he's put a lot of thought into other uh, mechanizations within the game to try and save the value of part and shard. And one of the things he's been doing lately, especially since he put the questing into place, uh, you'll notice that um, a lot more shard is being burnt because of the quests. Uh, if you actually want to claim the quest uh, prizes, whatever you get, you have to spend shard, right? Okay, so this is where this comes in again. Claim with care. Located a valuable NFT? Great. However, it won't instantly be yours. To claim these discovered treasures, you'll be required to pay a shard fee. This system adds an element of strategy and decision making, ensuring you weigh the worth of every discovered item. So what this tells me is it's kind of like with the quests, okay? I've discussed it uh, with several other people. This has been a topic lately because we've had a lot of Quests where you don't necessarily know if it's worth completing the quest or if you do complete the quest is it really worth uh, paying the shard to get the the chests right but in the big picture of things this is how he's providing a use case for shard and also um, br uh, hopefully bringing the value of shard up okay so uh, uh, accomplishes a couple things with with one with one new feature right so what we'll do is we'll jump over here to golem overlord and if you go through um, all your different stats, you will find that it's not specifically mentioned in most of them. However, if you go over here to your buffs, you should find buffs. Uh, see, um, and it will list 
exactly what uh, what kind of uh, chances you're talking about. OK, so uh, the first buff you'll see is NFT quality, a quantity. And the second one you will see is NFT rarity. So these both take a combination of different stats to boost your chances towards the relic radar chances when you go to claim. Right. So under the quantity, I'll just read what it says. Your NFT quantity influences the amount of NFTs you'll find on dailies and the relic radar. Sources are power, fortification, golem charging station, faith, and equipment. So all those things come together to up the quantity of NFTs you find on both the relic, the new upcoming relic radar chances, as well as your daily quests. So improving any of those gradually improves how many NFTs you will get. Okay. So the next thing is rarity. Okay. Your NFT rarity influences the rarity of the NFTs you'll find on dailies in the Relic Radar. Once again, same kind of thing. And we're, we're kind of in the realm of like potions in Splinterlands, uh, using potions and opening packs and such. Um, but the two things that apply here are prestige and equipment. So you have various uh, pieces of equipment that uh, you can get stat, add stats that will improve the NFT rarity as well as bringing your prestige up. And we've talked about this lately too, because uh, there's been kind of an ongoing discussion within my guild and a few other people that watch the shows um, about what the value of prestige is. Now, <clears throat> a couple months ago, there wasn't a whole lot of value to prestige. However, uh, Yixon did state that he was working on it. He was going to add more value. So this is another thing that increases the value of upping your prestige. So does it take constant pumping part and shard into it? Yes. Um, I usually uh, use my comp uh, and try to keep it. I'm at 49 here. Max is 50. I try to keep it above 45, you know, just to try to keep that coming in. I'm currently at prestige 16. I'm just just keeping going. Right. Um, but with that said, it will help towards the NFTs you find. Now, will those NFTs be worth it once you find them and you have to burn X number of shard to get them? Who knows? But I haven't dug in deep and took advantage of all the NFTs he was creating, right? A lot of potions and such. Um, I do use them as they're needed for quests and such, and I do use them to increase the quality of my armor, although, uh, or module rather, but I haven't really dug in deep. Okay, with that said, I think that's a, a good look at that. One other thing I will tell you is if you click up here on your, uh, click right here, uh, it will give you an overall look at your prestige stats. OK, obviously the maximum level is 50. Um, I'm at maximum stash 150 percent, maximum rep conversion. And then over here you have claim multiplier and NFT rarity, which is what we're specifically talking about right here. I'm at plus 304 um, percent. So that's another interesting thing to look at as far as there. Now, let's jump over and look at scroll down and look at expedition because this was another thing i was interested in you can see that he rated it uh, high complexity and a high time commitment but let's look at what it is okay he says prepare to embark on a journey like no other as i introduce the expedition a massive roguelite game mode coming to golem overlord venture into the unknown face unpredictable challenges and reap the rewards of your bravery ruthless progression in expedition stakes are high completing a run means starting from scratch while most of your progress will be wiped clean, each new beginning will find you slightly more empowered, letting, letting you dive deeper into the challenges. So that tells me that after you do multiple runs, each run, you're going to progress in some way. Um, you're not exactly going to go back to step one. So it's going to be worth actually um, going through an expedition and redoing it. So it's not just something you would want to do just once. Um, you go through and you get a little bit stronger, something happens to make you uh, make you a little bit better for the next time you go through. Diverse runs. The beauty of expedition lies in its variety. No two runs are the same. Each expedition you undertake promises unique rewards tailored exclusively for this mode. Whether you're in for a quick adrenaline packed sprint or a thorough methodical exploration, expedition has got you covered. So there's uh, there's random randomality to that, right? So it's not always going to be the same thing, which is good. I would hope that there would be um, 
a good amount, uh, a good variety, a number of amount of different ways the expedition could go to keep it fresh. Uh, obviously, you're not going to want it to get stale anytime soon, and you're going to want people to keep going through it. Um, strategic resets. Though you'll be resetting often, each reset isn't a step back, but a strategic move forward. It's all about playing smarter, leveraging the enhanced power you start with each time, and optimizing your strategy for greater war rewards. So back to the initial point. Um, after you reset, uh, you're going to be a little bit stronger in some way to move forward. And he ends up by saying, forge a legend in this vast new game mode where the journey is as rewarding as the destination. Ready your golem and set forth on an expedition of a lifetime. So if you go into your inventory, you'll see that there's an expedition link up here, up top. And you'll see where he's working on it. And in the past, he did have some verbiage here. Okay, I clicked on it and it's back. And you can see he's working on it here. There's going to be a cost associated with you know using your golems. There's also gonna be a shard cost. Hopefully it doesn't cost 2000 shards per expedition. Otherwise that's gonna be really expensive and maybe prohibitive for a lot of people. Um, but it says uh, still working on that. But you can see um, the various things involved here. The first thing I want to look at here is the various items. And, you know, they look like your standard kind of pieces of armor um, and various weapons and such that you would use to obviously, you know, strengthen yourself as you go along, equip it, however he ends up working. And you can see that it has various stats. Uh, one could imply that that's plus one power, so it gives you a better attack. The shield gives you plus two health, better for, you know, on health, obviously. Um, some equipment gives you more than one stat, so obviously you'd be looking for that kind of thing. And as they go down, they get rarer and rarer and, and, and more expensive and probably, you know, harder to find. Um, also, you'll note that at the bottom, he lists some of these enemies. First of all, I want to step back. And I want to give a shout out to Yixon for this great work with um, the AI generated art. Uh, uh, I, there's many, there's different sides to this fence as far as talking about the generated uh, AI generated art, but it's not. I've I've toyed around with it, and it's not completely easy to get these really good usable images out of it. So I think he's done a great job doing that, um, and it's made it made it easy for him as a small. Uh, one-man team to go ahead and put artwork into his game. So I think it looks good, but you can see down here the variety of, of monsters uh, ranging from the lowest to the highest as it stands now. Obviously, this is all still in flux, but the other thing you can see here is your different stats that are going to be involved. Your life, forge stones, which I'm not sure. It says these are your forge stones. You will need them to level your golems, items, and augments and rarity. So uh, I'm guessing you'll collect Forge Stones and use them to level up your different equipment, but we'll see about that. This is your luck stat. Um, this is your food. Uh, this is your food, and you will need it to traverse the map. The further away you are from the start, the more it costs. And, of course, uh, how many golems do you want to spend on the mission? Um, so clicking on these buttons just yields a soon error. So, But this is it's the basics, right? So, uh, So it's definitely looking pretty cool. So with that said, he is working on it, <clears throat> but who knows when it's going to come out. Uh, like I said, uh, he's focusing on Relic Radar right now, and we'll see the other whenever we see it. But I just wanted to go ahead and take a minute and hit on that. Now, um, the last thing I'm going to finish up with is uh, how to prepare. Okay, so I will mention um, it's really a discussion of stats, and it's really a discussion of um really what should you do to make yourself stronger for both Relic Radar and for Expeditions. And I think the basic answer is improve your stats, okay? So if you've been funneling a lot of part and shard out of the game, obviously, you know, it, it'll help you out in the future to get more NFTs uh, if you want to focus more of that on improving your character. Because as we said, um, Everything from power fortification, GCS, faith, equipment, that all helps out. And if you go into the inventory, um, your advisor is also going to be one thing to look at. Uh, like you can see my advisor gives plus 6% food when I'm on expedition. I only have this advisor because I was lucky and I got it out of a crate and it's really the best one I got. So that's what I've got equipped, right? Um, so with that said, uh, it'll be a bonus towards expedition. But that's another thing you can look at um, as far as getting ready is improving your advisor a little bit. 
But I will say, you can see, uh, back to my main point, is I haven't used a lot of these NFTs I've been getting from uh, Daily Quest. They're cool for what they do. I just haven't got into using them a lot. So they will be there uh, if and when I need them, though. So we'll jump back here. Um, overall, uh, I'm not sure. Uh, one of the things that is quite expensive in this game is unlocking a NFT to be able to sell it. Now, obviously, he's uh, this whole mechanic is... Um, and I have to go back to inventory. <laughs> this whole mechanic is set up. So say, for instance, uh, let's see here. I'm trying to find one that is uh, soul bound. Okay, so we're looking at this one. And in it, other games, it's called soul bound. In this game, it's called entangled. Okay, so if I wanted to sell a piece of this, uh, one of these NFTs on the market and make basically hive off of it, um, I would need to break that entanglement. You know, we've this is a topic we've talked about in Splinterlands time and time again for for a while since basically since Soulbound cards came out, right? So um, they've hinted around that Soulbound cards will be able to be opened up at some time in the future and used for other things, you know. But there will be a price. Same idea here. Um, you have to break the entanglement. The thing is, it's very expensive to break the entanglement on these NFTs. It's so expensive that you really, I mean, unless it's really nice and needed on the market um, and somebody's going to buy it, it's just, you got to think twice. Look at here, um, 20,536 part to break entanglement on this, okay? 20,000. It is a skin and it. I, I will give it to you that it is a skin and it is uh, one of the higher... Uh, rarities um, let's go down here and just look at kind of like a regular rare one okay so we're going to take a look at this um, this background it's precious rarity it is uh, 41 a little bit over 4100 part to uh, break the entanglement now I just looked at uh, the current going rates and the current going rates for um, part is about 30 cents uh, 29 30 cents per 1000 okay so we're looking at just use 30 cents times four. So you're looking about a buck 20, a buck 25 to just break the entanglement on one. But um, what would that sell for? That would be the next question. What would make that worth it, right? So the next question is how much would that sell for on the market? Let's look at backgrounds. Let's look at precious. So you're looking at the cheapest one is like 3.5, you know, anywhere from 3.5 hive up to 70 hive. Um, so it just really depends. Um, you know, that one might get 5, 10 hive, something like that. And hive is at like uh, just under 30 cents. So you're looking at a few bucks. And then you have to subtract what you have to take it what it takes to break the entanglement uh, wrong tab so let's go back so I guess that's my point my point is I think that in this system I think I, I like a lot of it uh, I think that I have not been taking advantage of breaking entanglement I understand why he put it in there he put it, he put it in there to uh, burn a lot of, uh, of part off this this system right um, and to boost part that's fine that's fine but I personally for my use case I just think the prices are too high to break entanglement now what's that produces it, it produces a market that doesn't have a whole lot of stuff on it and the stuff that is on the market is very expensive so just to give you an example let's go here to the market um, I've been looking at uh, you know modules I want to increase the quality of my module and if I want to go in here and buy one of these uh, which would be a step up for me one identified module is 28 hive and that's you know 28 there's a few available from 28 to 40 there but then you jump up significantly depending upon what the stats are on it right so basically i guess it's it's expensive to break the entanglement which makes the sale price when they hit the market go up further uh, make it more expensive and then it decreases the actual amount of uh, goods that you have to choose from on the actual market. Obviously, you can put a bid in. If people want to take it, that's fine. 
Uh, I just figured I'd throw that out there. Now, okay, so those are two new things that are getting ready to come out. Um, obviously, uh, Relic Radar is a lot closer than what Expedition is. Uh, expeditions are. Ex expeditions sound cool. They sound very reminiscent of what Splinter Forge brought out a little while ago. I haven't really dug into the Splinter Forge uh, ones, but. Um, We'll take a look whenever they come out here. There's a lot of cool new equipment and such that uh, he's devised for um, as, you know, uh, what you would get out of expeditions and what you would equip to your character and this and that. So it, it really sounds cool. Um, so I hope it's implemented good and uh, that we don't have to wait an extremely long time about it. You know, he's just one guy, so it takes a while to... Okay, well, thanks for joining me. This has been Bronze Dragon taking a look at Golem Overlord and some upcoming features. Thanks for dropping by. I hope everyone on your side is happy and healthy. If you like this kind of coverage, please remember to like and subscribe. Pass this around to some of your friends who might be interested in Golem Overlord. And if you're new to the game, uh, you haven't tried it yet, please use my link uh, to try the game out. Uh, it helps me out. And I'll see you on the flip side.